We're back looking at more timeless events for MTG Arena's newest format, Timeless. That's the no bans format that allows you to use any card on Arena with some restrictions for three cards. Yesterday we saw a tournament featuring all of the greatest MTG streamers and content creators from Hamhawks, Nathan Stoyer, Reed Duke, all the way to Rebel and Ali Eldrazi. This was only a 16 person event, so we're not going to look too far down the listing, sticking mainly to the decks doing 5-0 and 4-1. and Now, with the top three, we have two Rakdos Breach decks and a Demir Control list. So we'll look at the differences between those two Rakdos decks. Elliot Dragon won this event playing a Loris Underworld Breach list. This Rakdos list has Stitcher's Supplier to play on turn one, milling a couple cards into your graveyard when it enters and when it dies. We also have Dragon Raised Channeler, throw cards into your bin off of every non-creature spell you're casting. Uh, has a lot of good interactions with the Inquisition of Kozilek and the Thoughtseize, but it's mostly about this Dark Ritual. Having Dark Ritual in the format means that you can get ahead with this list, not minding that you're down a bunch of cards because you're relying on Underworld Breach. Now, Underworld Breach lets you cast each card in your graveyard with an escape cost equal to that card's mana value plus three exiled cards from your graveyard, which means you need a lot of stuff in your graveyard. Proxa helps you use up some of those cards if you don't need them, but this list is probably more characterized by Claim the Firstborn. Now, if you haven't seen this before, it is a pain in the ass. Gain control of target creature with mana value three or less until end of turn. On tap it, give it haste for one mana. You're using this so you can sacrifice your opponent's Ragavan or their Deathrite Shaman. You have Deadly Dispute to draw a couple cards, but you have Diabolic Intent in order to sacrifice a creature and look for anything in your library. Demonic Tutor is restricted to one copy, and that's fine, because we have other ways to find the cards we need, mainly the Underworld Breach. Mishra's Bobble cast from your graveyard for free, amongst many other spells, because you have the Dark Rituals to gain mana from your graveyard. Now, if you're not able to kill your opponent off of all these spells, Tendrils of Agony lets you storm to sap your opponent for two life for each spell you've cast in this turn. The deck is very efficient. There's only one mana value, two mana value, and then this Tendrils of Agony. In the sideboard, we have more Thought Seizes, and then we have the full Ragavan and Deathrite Shaman running more fetch lands. This does deal a lot of damage to yourself, but it's mitigated by having this Tendrils of Agony to gain yourself up that life, even if you're not doing it for lethal damage. I am very scared of lists like this because Claim the Firstborn is just stealing cards from your opponent and it they always go to a bad cause. Now, how does this differ from the second list, which is also Rakdos Breach? we don't see the Claim the Firstborn. Instead, have more Orcish Bowmasters and more Ragavans. It's a leaner list. It still runs the Stitcher Suppliers with the Diabolic Intent and all the Dark Rituals so that you can cast all these spells again from your graveyard. The sideboard looks a little bit different with more options for exiling your opponent's graveyard. Grape Shot for an offensive version of the Tendrils of Agony combo. Have these Pithing Needles in take care of somebody's Minsk and Boo that's a real pain in the ass, or even an Oko. Feed the Swarm does a great job of taking out enchantments like Necropotence, as well as taking care of a lot of creatures. But this Molten Collapse from the new Excellent set is pretty amazing. You're destroying a creature or a Planeswalker, or a non-creature, non-land permanent with mana value one or less. So even if you're sniping someone's treasure and it has good options for this format, which doesn't look to cast anything beyond two mana. Now this list seems a little bit more tuned finally for the meta, whereas the first place list just seems to have more aggression. Ragavan is an incredibly good card, and when you're casting it on turn two to dash it in and deal damage and grab more mana, it's, it feels so good. There's a reason why these lists are doing so well, and it just kind of follows the trend that we've had for the last year or so where Rakdos is king. However, the third place from Mistmin is really cool. This is a Demir list with only creature in the list of Orcish Bowmasters. 
when you're able to protect a single Orcish Bowmaster, you can kind of determine how the game is going to go. This uses Drown on the Lock, which is a counter spell and a kill spell with there's enough cards on the graveyard and everyone is running all the fetch lands. We, we're all doing the same thing of full, full gas in order to make the format as much like modern as possible. This list is only running two of Lorien Revealed, which is an island cycling card, and it also can cycle to get a Mystic Sanctuary. Dig Through Time and this Cling to Dust, which is both in the main board, are able to really extend out a game and grind for a lot of value by exiling from your opponent's graveyard and drawing cards. Sauron's Ransom is a fantastic Factor Fiction-like card for three mana at an instant, and it's still putting two cards in your hand and two cards in your graveyard. We got a Legion's End and a full play set of counter spells alongside the obligatory Mishra's Bobble and Brainstorm for these colors. Sideboard just sees more thought seizes, more interaction for creatures, along with one of my favorite counter spells, Aether Gust. It also has this Filigree Silex, which I really like. Two mana for an artifact that you put LOL counters on it by tapping it, and then you just destroy all permanents with mana value equal to the number of oil counters. We see the Pithing Needle make an appearance with the Demir list. Obviously, it can do a lot of damage in a control deck. The last list we are going to look at is from Gabriel Nassif. This is Golgari Necropotence. Uh, this is, again, a Dark Ritual deck looking to put out a turn one Necropotence. You might have to mulligan a little harder in order to pull this off, but the point is that getting the Necropotence down is going to get you enough cards back, even the turn that it goes down, because you can just fill up to seven cards at the end of your turn. Now, the most interaction here is with Shieldred's Edict, one Fatal Push, and March of the Wretched Sorrow. March of the Wretched Sorrow allows you to deal X damage to target creature or planeswalker, and you gain X life, but you're able to pay into it by exiling black cards in your hand, or just by having a ton of black mana from a dark ritual. So they're both instants, and you can destroy basically anything. <laughs> Especially just one Dark Ritual turns this into minus two, minus two, which destroys Deathrite Shaman for sure, and more importantly, it destroys Ragavan. Four Ink Possession of Kozilex and four the rest, which I feel is uh, an acknowledgement that the life totals in this format go so low, so fast, just from the fetch lands, and when you add Necropotence into that, it gets a lot worse. We see our obligatory one of Demonic Tutor for whatever you need, whenever you need it. Shieldred and the One Ring, able to run fewer copies because of the Beseech the Mirror. Beseech the Mirror has the amazing option of bargaining it, usually to the Orcish Bowmaster's token, in order to just put something for mana value or less from your library onto the battlefield. So that's either a copy of the One Ring or that Shieldred to, uh, to make the little tappy combo where you gain a bunch of life your opponent watches you get a bunch of cards raska gorgari queen is back to what she was doing when she was first going through standard which is destroying okos now if you're able to get her out on turn two with that dark ritual you're able to keep pace with those uro and oko decks in the sideboard we see haywire might and this terrifying Ashiok Dream Render, which is probably played on turn one as well. It's it's scary to see that alongside the Leyline of the Void and Go Blank. People are relying so much on their graveyards in this format. I think that's about it. Just super quick on this new pseudo tournament that we saw from the community. I thought we could go through these lists. You can find all of them in the description, or you can take a look and copy it if you need to uh, grab that for yourself. You'll have a good day, and thanks again for stopping by.